in general radiation does not have so much of an effect at the normal temperatures which we deal with. Uh, that was what I was trying to tell, I just wanted to show you the authentic uh, uh, what you call statement from the book by which uh, you can understand uh, that uh, it is ignored. In the end I will try to show you this. Radiation is the only mode of heat transfer can occur through a vacuum. If you see the first conduction, I mean before that it comes to convection, convection is a lot related to mass transfer, exchange of heat because of a cooling medium and how these things will uh, what you call affect each other. So, if you take a thing like an automobile, the source of the heat is the combustion chamber and through conduction it comes out, out of the, the what you call a cylinder or the combustion chamber. There you directly have a medium typically a liquid medium, it could be as I said uh, what you call coolant uh, mixed with an antifreeze propylene glycol or uh, equivalent to that. So, you have by conduction to a fluid which is liquid in that case and the whole thing comes to the front uh, heat exchanger in the front. Uh, in case you have not followed these lectures in a sequence which incidentally is loosely called a radiator, it does not do any radiation instantly and uh, it is a matter of convenience that is painted black. So, non black even white uh, works as efficiently. And then there the heat that is uh, what you call generated in the cylinder will come back and then you exchange that heat in the what you call heat exchanger to ambient air. So, eventually the last thing is air cooling and there again say when the vehicle is in movement you would probably do not even need that so called fan. And in case you have not followed my other lectures, there is no fan belt, all fans are now cooled electrically and there is usually a small sensor. Uh, some of the fans have two speeds, otherwise a simple on off control is there. As long as your vehicle is moving forward, probably the fan is off or it is idling and just uh, moving along with the air without causing too much of any hindrance. And when it is stationary or there is a tailwind and there is not much of uh, what do you call heat uh, uh, convection taking place then the fan is switched on. So, when there is a headwind and uh, when you are moving you do not need the fan hence you find a sticker also. So, that all comes back. So, we have this thing is in the case of conduction it is basically a solid. In the case of convection we have this various types of media. Finally, in the case of radiation is the only mode of heat transfer that can occur through a vacuum and is dependent on the temperature of the radiating surface. You see the last line, unless the temperature of the device is extremely high or the difference in temperature is extreme such as between the sun and a spacecraft, radiation is usually disregarded as a significant heat of heat transfer. This is the one I was looking for anyway, I think I have cut and pasted it here. You have seen that radiation really does not help if somebody says uh, I mean I am not saying he is ignorant, he is making you to understand that three modes each share equally uh, not true <laughs> and in fact two of them share the uh, proper radiation you can ignore unless the mm, temperature difference is very large and often in physics that is for you to explain to uh, for you to understand they will give you an example of a boy I mean sorry a student standing in the sun wearing dark clothes versus a student standing in the sun wearing white clothes. It does make a difference because there the dark clothes instantly are also good radiators of heat. In this case a radiation takes place both ways from the sun it absorbs the heat. Similarly, if you see the white is not that good a radiator, difference is small enough. So, you feel slightly better, it is not as if you know there is a drastic difference in that they are slightly better. Similarly, shade temperatures are lower than the direct sun temperatures. So, now you know the radiation thing, radiation makes sense only when sun temperatures and very large temperatures are involved. Now, does it make sense? Yes, of course, it makes sense. This is where I think, no, I think I should uh, point out I 
somewhere towards end in the end of the series i'll show you if you see a bread toaster and if you look inside oh, of course these days they're safe otherwise you can push the uh, the toast button down and then and that uh, you can see the red uh, radiating heater coils inside so when you keep your uh, toast i mean when you keep your bread slices inside in fact mind you the bottom is uh, usually blocked with a, a tray which will collect all the crumbs a crumb tray there are not too much of convection most of the heating is by radiation now we come to the important thing the outside doesn't feel so hot so how is it managed next time if you see carefully you can touch the outside okay don't put your finger inside the uh, i know you are not so bad don't believe this old fellow so outsides that don't feel hot the case of the thing doesn't feel hot you know why because all they do is they put two thin highly polished aluminum foil coated plates on both sides that is enough for the radiation to be reflected back it has two advantages one of it is it will allow the radiation to get back and do its work and it will prevent cooling from outside and there is also a small gap which is kept there that gap is an air gap that air gap is sufficient because conductivity of this air is poor secondly since we have the crumb tray at the bottom and the whole thing is sealed not much of convection takes place as such the heat of that plate doesn't uh, you know affect us you will find it slightly warm in fact very early vintage toasters had things the other way both sides you could open the sides on both sides which have a grill put the toaster i mean uh, what you call bread pieces close them then they will get toasted because there is only a single heater inside take it open them again reverse the toast put back and like a tea ceremony a toasting ceremony was great so you can probably keep it there and uh, enjoy and if it's a somebody who takes in charge of these technical things they used to make a big thing about it the issue again now the sorry for the story and distraction the issue there is conduction is very real convection is real and this radiation needs to be in the case of electronic cooling it's not important when you want to heat something it is real you cannot ignore it however just because we cannot see it it doesn't mean we cannot uh, i mean it doesn't exist there so if you are to coat something black if you are to coat something black like this and it is exposed to sunlight maybe through a window or uh, if it's a car uh, thing which you leave in the sun it is likely to pick up heat from the ambient i mean from the sun or even reflected light so you don't feel i mean you don't see them coated like this anymore most of the time it's a natural process of anodizing and then they close that by dipping it is mostly in water and sometimes a small called you know emetalization and all emetal anodization is done so this is real saying radiation takes place by any two bodies having temperature of t1 and uh, t2 is found by emissivity of the radiating surface highly reflective is zero highly absorptive is one so i can go back to the manuals and check for the emissivity of various materials so usually you have polished aluminum normal aluminum polished copper and so many other materials there you will notice whenever they talk about painted surfaces emissivity doesn't change what looks black to us is not very serious uh, the difference is between maybe 0.8 and 0.85 between black and what is non black but not reflective understood no between white and black so maybe you can try uh, i will not uh, what do you call get into a discussion or argument not long ago around 20 30 years back black cars were considered hot meaning they feel hot inside and white cars uh, were considered cool so both ways no even the word hot and cool we have hot rods and you know cool thing and all that now 
these days after a due this thing they have found out it is not really true and the difference may be very small. So, and more light enters through the windows. So, if you put a proper uh, what do you call IR blocking glass especially the main windshield and in the normal running thing you will not find any difference in fact it is cooler. So, radiation is real just like conduction and convection is real only problem is we have this emissivity of the radiating surface which you need to follow. Then another important thing is surface area of radiation. So, which is very 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 real. So, if you take a heat sink like this fins are close and they are not deep ok. Imagine you have deep fins then other than this small area which is uh, you know part of the base hmm, that part of this base here not much of too much of radiation is there and because of the depth you know also you know it takes a, a total internal reflection and the total surface which is represented is not high you understood no. So, this area also it is not easy to calculate the we have a shape factor between surface area of body and uh, body 2. So, we have this issue of how much is it exposed and all later on we will come to this and then this Stephen Boltzmann constant comes directly from fundamental understanding of the physics behind this. Unless the temperature of the device is high such as between sun and a spacecraft radiation is disregarded as a significant source of heat transfer. However, to decide the importance to the overall heat transfer we can define uh, these things. So, they have all these things you know uh, I mean for uh, this thing you just have a how to calculate a heat transfer coefficient in radiation which is referred to here ok. In this earlier uh, thing if you multiply both of them to get this q r no, and then uh, you have this area and uh, these things you end up with this. Now, we come to while all that part is only for us for understanding in real life it is a very complicated uh, structure. So, I have shown you about uh, you see here this is directly from the chip ok primary thermal resistances and chip heat sink assembly while I was talking to I was showing you all the devices which are at the system level you will see here that uh, even at the chip level the same thing works here. So, we have a lead and then you have a heat sink and then for you to understand this modeling in my earlier uh, lecture I showed you how the heat is conducted away from a board. So, there is a board in which all this a nice colored picture here instead he has uh, you know the what do you call Rendsburg has given this issue of what do you call thermal resistance between uh, the heat sink to ambient, thermal resistance between case to heat sink, then thermal resistance between junction to case. So, practical thermal resistances he has given here. Why these are important is the heat sink manufacturer usually by empirical or by actual measurements he will give you data regarding what is the theta sink to ambient thermal resistance as so many degrees centigrade per watt. So, it is for you to now use that and somehow calculate junction to case and case to heat sink. Usually, when junction to case are there, so case to heat sink is where our all our uh, what do you call inventiveness comes, and we try to make the maximum junction to case is expressed in degrees centigrade is an internal function of the design and manufacturing method used by the device manufacturer because this resistance occurs within the device heat sinks or other heat dissipating device does not affect it. 
the semiconductor decides I mean manufacturer decides the resistance by weighing such factors as the maximum allowable junction temperature, the cost of the device and power. For example, plastic semiconductor is often used for a low power inexpensive device. So, K is not kilo it means degrees Kelvin per watt. Okay. If the device operates in a 35 degree environment dissipates 0 0.5 degree. So, the junction temperature can become 60 degrees. However, for a high powered component the manufacturer might use a costly approach to dissipate the power. For this type of component may be 2 degree Kelvin I mean centigrade per watt. Here we get into this thing no we end up with all this what I said what oh it is very very heavy all this beautiful uh, what you call heat dissipators in which you have a mass here and then uh, you have a tapered fin. Okay. This tapered fin in this case is not too prominently tapered, but however if you see this case it is very prominently tapered see in this obviously 1, 2, 3, 4 do the maximum amount of work this other one is not of the similar design as it as it is already are coming away from the center and it is practically parallel because it is also used as a mounting device. So, we have here a way of holding it together in my sample this has been a thread has been tapped into it you see the construction here base thick tip small to improve the fin effectiveness, but however this last fin it is not true because while this can also be used if you are to mount it on another aluminum plate or something a little bit of conduction can be taken off here. This is primarily made to work with a this type of a fan which is a 160 mm fan. So, by definition no this is called a 160 HD high density 160 by 160 mm fan if you attach it some places they put two of these fans one here and one there and uh, try their best, but even there if you just keep on increasing the what do you call uh, the flow rate uh, CFM or uh, meters per second it is not a linear relationship only up to I mean it is effective only up to 2 or 3 meters per uh, second beyond about 5 or 6 increasing anymore other than increasing noise it does not help. So, all these things you know somebody has modeled them and they have made these things some of them are existing, but modeling has helps us understand by increasing the base at it. So, if you examine this heat sink versus this heat sink it is very very obvious oh yeah I think I will keep it here you have seen this this is thin and parallel this one is thick at the base and tapered and also there is a I right now I am not able to think why this whether this radial design helps or not probably it helps otherwise they would not have done it. Okay. This is where first thing is you have not too much of what do you call control on the junction to case issues about a device about a package, but the semiconductor packages have been improving a lot by which you know what was simple if you remember the old uh, transistors diodes and all that original glass bead diodes were a problem that OA series. Then later on when transistors came we had AC 127, 128 you, you had a cover and then you have to put a small radial fin heat sink on it. Later on power transistors came where you have a base on which things are directly mounted. Typical examples are the TO3 package which you find behind power amplifiers and all the whole power amplifiers you have an oblong uh, oval thing that is a TO3 package at one time TO3 package was the solution for everything smaller variant of it is called the TO66. Later on stud mounted devices started coming. So, you have a thick copper stud. So, you have things like uh, 3 8 inch or uh, 
little smaller typically 1 fourth inch or even no 4 mm and uh, 1 eighth inch it is a big stud and directly on top of it they used to mount the active device. So, diodes even today come within that thing. So, you have diodes which come with a half inch stud. So, if you can directly what you call tap a hole put this inside and then one of the pictures next no shows you how to mount a diode and why these various packages have evolved is basically because of this trying to reduce this one. See this theta junction to case we need to what do you call reduce the what do you, thermal resistance. So, various packages have evolved over it, but if you just reduce it whatever power is available at the what do you call in the junction is now passed on to the case. Now, we have to make things to how to make cool the case that is why you have things like that Pentium cooler or in the case of our power electronics you have the various uh, sub stud mounted transistors and as you go out now even HF or even VHF transmitters and all use these devices only and uh, I do not know I will not dare comment on that I expect that uh, they work at very high frequencies. But the mounting and the lead out and all the you know, somebody has designed carefully. So, if you look at this thing see the last thing specialized chip assembly is using expensive lead forms thermally conductive ceramics and diamond heat spreaders can lower this value. So, I expect that uh, this gaming chips and all that lot of money is spent on these things and next time when you have a chance have a look at a thermal or the cooling device for a gaming thing it usually has a nice beautiful gold color it is aluminum it has a nice radial fan and then the fins on both sides are given a beautiful gold uh, anodizing. So, probably it is a sales point and I'm, I allow me to make a guess anything that glitters has more sales value. Next slide shows us about sync to ambient like the other resistances experts and degrees centigrade uh, per watt most important resistance of the three as susceptible to change by the packaging engineer. So, all this what all I have been talking and all the samples which I have shown here are all very much related to how to lower this heat transfer coefficient in by convection or combined this thing. The smaller this value the total resulting resistance the more power the device can handle without exceeding the simplified model this value depends on the conductive properties of the heat sink, fin efficiency, surface area, convective heat transfer coefficient. So, both if you can increase this area and reduce this you are in business is a complex function and cannot be easily generalized for use. So, many empirical equations result in a reasonable degree of accuracy is a reciprocal of the product of heat transfer coefficient and the heat transfer surface area. So, probably we have come to the end of this lecture at this point. Hence, we end up with this large paraphernalia of these materials it is very heavy oh permit me to just lift it and show it to you you have seen this monstrous I will not uh, tilt it because it falls and uh, it weighs a lot of of the remaining slides which I will you know important things I will take and extract. Why I have done this is you can always go back maybe pause the video 
and when you buy the book you know where to look for these things. The issue in the end day is how do you predict and minimize the heat transfer coefficients so that the temperature rise is minimum. So, thank you for patiently listening to probably a repetition of what I have covered earlier. The only difference being I have shown you some samples here and then you will not become an expert uh, ok let me say like that no experts have not become experts by just reading a book. So, you need to have some shop experience go check and all that and then you cannot have shock experience by burning devices. If you are very much prepared for uh, uh, this thing by reading up the theory and then next when you do the experiment you will have proper uh, values to do which will continue maybe from the next lecture. So, thank you.